record button. All right, now we are actually live. We'll get started here in just half a moment. But welcome, welcome to award winning essays. Um, I am so excited to have you all here. And um, the essay writing process, I'm going to give you like tell you a little secret. The essay writing process is actually one of my favorite parts of the college application process. Um, I know that makes me sound like a geek as a former English teacher, but I love it. And I think it's a really great opportunity for students to showcase some of their wonderful um, um, thoughts, experiences, and talents in a very creative way. So um, today, wow, sorry about that. Today we're gonna we have a ton to talk about in a relatively short amount of time. So please have a pen or pencil handy. Please take notes um, and ask any questions either in the question box or in the chat box. I will take a break periodically and look for those questions. I also with this is pretty exciting and it's a new addition to this webinar is I've, um, I have a couple of examples that I'm actually going to share with you guys. So yeah, so it's going to be a great day. So we're going to talk about the status of college admissions and why the essay is so darn important. What is our timeline today for getting started with the application process and those essays? Why write the main essay? What's the purpose of these essays and the short answer questions? Um, so how do we get started, right? How do we prevent that writer's block before it even begins? And then finally, what are some common mistakes that families and students make when doing these essays? So um, also for my parents in the audience, there are some things that you can do to help facilitate this process and some things that you definitely should not do. So we're gonna cover those things also. Um, also, please, please, at the beginning here, I wanna mention, follow us on your socials, okay? We have a Twitter, we have a LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, um, all of these uh, social media outlets. I don't think we're on TikTok yet. Um, I'm, I actually, I don't personally have TikTok, but I have all the others. Please give us a follow. We do try to post, uh, relevant and timely blogs, um, newsletters, et cetera. We'd love to have you on that mailing list. And of course, all of this is absolutely free to access. So share it with friends, all right? Um, and one quick disclaimer that I do like to say is that we are, um, the, the information that we give in any and all of these webinars is intended for um, highly selective universities. It is meant to just give you information about the process and what's coming up. It's definitely not advice for your particular scholar if we are not already working with you. So um, just keep that in mind for the most up-to-date information on any particular college or university. Always check their website, their admissions page, um, and um, their their information on the common application for short answer questions. And I do have, if we have time, I'm gonna demonstrate where we can find those short answer questions as well. So um, awesome, here we are, take some notes. We are about to begin. So let's speak just a little bit about the status of college admissions and why this essay is now more important than ever. So, um, I, during COVID and even before COVID, this was beginning to be a trend, but now it's even more um, prevalent than ever, is that college admissions, more of the highly selectives, are going toward a holistic review process. And for those of you guys who are new to Access College America or are just beginning this process, Holistic admission is a little bit different from like, say, when we were applying to college a long time ago. I mean, I, I hesitate to tell you just how long ago that was, but, you know, back in, in my day or, you know, when if, if you're a parent in the audience, it was kind of like you had good grades, you send in an essay, you send in your test score and you're kind of done. It was easy. You know, there was not a lot to it. Um, but nowadays, it's, it is a, there is a lot more going on here. So what is holistic admissions? Um, because now testing at many colleges and universities is optional, okay? California system, they are completely test, test blind. They, they will not look at a test score if submitted. Um, some of the Southern states are getting back to more testing and never really lifted those restrictions such as Florida, but many states in the country 
um, you know, are still toying with these, these um, policies in which testing is optional. Now, what does that mean for the rest of the application if a student or scholar sends in a college application without a test score? That means every single piece of that college, college um, application means more. Right. So the three things that schools look at the most of any uh, have the most weight, carry the most importance in a college application are these the students grades, their grade point average cumulative weighted and their um, their class rank and the academic rigor of their school schedule. So what does that mean? It's a comparison between the, the, the classes that were offered at that high school and the number of classes at an advanced or AP level that that student took. So how challenging was the curriculum that your student selected? Now, don't worry if you're from a high school that does not offer tons of AP or honors classes. You will not be penalized by not taking for not taking classes that weren't even offered at your school. So don't worry about that. But um, if you go to a highly selective high school or a, um, a busy high school with lots of advanced and AP options, well, then it's probably good for a highly selective colleges for you to have taken the largest number of those difficult classes that you're able to succeed in. Uh, that you're able to succeed in, right? Um, mental health is a thing, so keep that in mind. However, we wanna make sure that you, you're taking a rigorous curriculum. So the three things that matter most, grade point average, test scores, Oh, excuse me, grade point average, class rank, and um, rigor of the, the curriculum. Test scores are in there too, because it's a quantifiable thing. An excellent test score will always be a, um, a point for you. It'll look good if you have above the 50th, ranging up to the 75th or 100th percentile of test scores submitted. However, if you have a test score that is below the 50th percentile of average admitted freshmen to a school, you probably don't want to send that score because it's not going to help the strength of your college application. So other areas that you're going to be evaluated on as a student include your college essays, your short answer questions, your letters of recommendation, um, your extracurricular activities, um, co-curricular activities, all of these things, now that test optional is a trend, matter more. And a holistic review indicates that we are going to look at these, this application with those other things more at the top of our minds, okay? Um, very low grades, very low test scores are, are uh, good, good places for uh, college admissions officers to ad immediately, you know, throw out that application and put it in the deny pile. Um, however, for competitive students, they're going to be taking lots of looks at these essays. And can a student write? Um, can they command the language? And that can they get a point across? And what is unique about this um, about this applicant? A little bit more on that later. So uh, let me go back to something that I mentioned because if you are new to us, you might not um, might not have heard of this. Is are you a majority applicant? from a busy high school. So a busy high school would be a highly academic high school, maybe a larger school. I'm looking at you, Lassa. I'm looking at you, Westlake. I'm looking at you, Audrey Kell. I'm looking at you, Myers Park. All of these schools, they're very academic high schools, right? And so many of these students from these high schools apply to highly selective colleges. However, a college admissions officer, say from an Ivy League school or a highly selective co college at UT, they can't take half of their incoming class from Lhasa and Westlake. They simply can't. Their job is to build a balanced class of students of all socioeconomic backgrounds, all races, all parts of the country, and even international students. So um, you can see that for those high schools at which many applicants apply to highly selective schools, it's going to be just to scotch harder because there's more competition. As well, are you a majority applicant? Generally, groups that are overrepresented in the applicant pool include white students, Indian American students, and Asian American students. So those, since those groups are, are historically tend to apply to college more than other groups, those students might have a little bit harder time too. So if you're a majority applicant for a busy high school, understand that your application needs to be even stronger because there's going to be lots of competition in that um, race for college admissions to a highly selective. Okay. 
So I mentioned the low test score, a, even a poor essay, um, low grade point average. Those are quick elimination tools that highly selective colleges use. Um, however, let's talk about some things that you can do to boost up your chances and to, um, you know, to help out that application. One thing that some families might not have thought of, and this is important, it's called demonstrating interest. And so when a student demonstrates interest in a college, what does that mean? It not only means that they're interested in it intrins intrinsically and they've done the research on that college, it means that they've showed the college that they're interested in them, meaning they have taken a campus tour and let's, um, you know, not not just solo, they've signed up for a campus tour. They have met with an admissions officer from that school. They have signed up for the newsletter and actually read it when it comes in, right? Oddly, college, colleges spend a whole lot of money on tracking software in which they will actually track sometimes if a student opens the email where the newsletter is located. Yeah, a little creepy, but true. And if you're really interested in that school, you're going to want to read up on those things as well. Um, have you followed them on social media, et cetera? These things are all important in demonstrating interest. Why? Because colleges are in the business of inviting people to their party, meaning their freshman incoming class. They want to invite people who are going to come to the party, and those who have demonstrated interest are more likely to come. In general, colleges send out more acceptance letters than they have seats. Why? Because Every student who is accepted to a particular college or university isn't going to come, right? They're going to enroll elsewhere. So the college wants to protect what's known as its yield rate. A yield rate is the number of students who apply to a college and are accepted at versus, versus the accepted students versus those who actually enroll. A high yield rate looks really good for colleges, right? We admitted this many and this many came, right? So you wanna make sure you're demonstrating interest, showing that that admissions officer that, yeah, if you invite me to this party, I'm gonna come, all right? So another, another thing that I wanted to mention in terms of the state of college admissions, um, in looking at your extracurricular activities, what else makes a strong application? And we're going to, of course, do a deep dive into the essay and the strength of that um, in college admissions. But what else makes a strong, a strong applicant? It's that if a student wants to major in biology, engineering, journalism, English, whatever it is, they have done activities outside the classroom and at school that point to that as a good major for that student. So for example, my engineering majors, have you taken the highest level of math and science available at your school? Have you done projects that have to do with engineering and science? Um, perhaps have you had an internship, if you're fortunate enough to have one, of, ha have one that relates to your potential uh, career path? Have you done massive open online classes and demonstrated interest outside the classroom of your intellectual curiosity? Fit to major, that's what I'm talking about. And that's an important thing to do too, if you're lucky enough to know what major you're going to apply to. And if not, we have a Career Connections webinar coming up and we can talk about how to narrow that choice down, right? Um, with our scholars, we work extensively on, on um on career prep and like maybe finding out what careers would be great fits for a student. So um, yeah, I, I, I really enjoy doing that as a career specialist as well. I'm the career specialist on staff here at Access College America. And so um, the possibilities are really endless, but we have some tools to do that. And if your school has Naviance, about 40% of American high schools do have Naviance. There are some great self-discovery tools on there too that are absolutely free to students who have them. So keep that in mind. Um, as well, when building a balanced college list, keep in mind that for in the last several application cycles, and it looks like for this application cycle, I mean, our deadline is coming up soon. May 1st is the deposit deadline. So we have our senior scholars right now. Seniors across the country are just really making their final decisions and getting ready for decision day on May the 1st. So understand that your safety schools and your target schools may shift up a little bit because certain colleges, especially the most popular, the most highly selective colleges or universities, those that have a high rejection rate, those colleges 
are becoming ever more selective ever more selective. And so a school that might have been a target school or a likely school for a student to get into two years ago might now be their their um, their reach school. Yep. And these safety schools might now become their target schools. So when building a balanced college list, my best piece of advice is to get a get every college on your list that you would be very, very happy to go to. Fall in love with each campus. Go visit them. See what a amazing things are going on there because there is a lot, lot, lot to, um, to consider for each college. We have, we'll, we'll do some college research stuff in another webinar if you're interested and I'll let you know how to access those things at the end here. So, um, very quick screen share, shifting focus to the essays. Um, all right, so building your college list is going to be very, very important. So you're planning your content of the essay right now. So there are two types of the two types of essays that we're going to talk about. The first one is the main essay. That main essay is approximately 650 words and there are approximately seven or there are seven prompts on the common application that students have to choose from. Now, the last prompt, prompt number seven, is very simple. You'll probably remember it, even if I just say it. It is write an essay on the topic of your choice. So really, for that main essay, a student can write about just about anything that they want to write about, which is great news, right? I'm going to show the common application and where you can find these things a little bit later. Um, so keep notes because that type of that type of essay is up to 650 words. If it's more than 650 words, it's not going to copy and paste into the common application. So keep that in mind. Um, so the main essay, the, the purpose of it, why do we write this essay? And why do colleges even want to bother reading it when they're so slammed with applications? Well, let me tell you this. The main essay is not a quantifiable thing, right? Grades, test scores academic rigor, class rank. These are all numbers, they're quantifiable. Um, and they will give a picture of a student, what they look like on paper, but it does certainly not humanize that student. In the holistic review process, um, colleges are also interested in what is the student going to bring to campus? What are their values and do they align with the values of our college or university? What contributions will they make here? What lessons have they learned in the past that make them an interesting human being? What are they curious about? Are they able to introspect and tell a good story? Do they have great communication skills? These are the types of students that colleges really want on their campus. So the main essay is really important because it's the humanizing aspect of the entire thing, okay? Um, so there are there can be two main essays, as it says on my slide, um, sometimes. But what we want to do, and I'm, I'm not going to use the examples that are listed here, so don't so don't worry about that. But um, um, there can be two, but generally there's just one main essay. The second kind of essay is the short answer question essay. These can be anywhere from 50 words to 700 words. I know that sounds like a huge, huge range, but generally they're around and about 250 to 300 words. And these are called your supplemental questions or short answer question essays. The reason why college research is so important, as well as doing some career exploration, is the most common type of short answer question is a why this college and why this major? Why do you want to study this? What will you contribute to the journalism department at school XYZ? Um, or why this college? Why did you choose to come here? Uh, bad topics for that, the second answer, right? For, for why did you choose to come here? Don't talk about the weather. Don't talk about the vibe. Don't talk about that your friends go there or they have a really cool sports team, okay? Those things sound shallow and they are actually shallow. If you don't have a better reason for wanting to go to that college, then um, you probably shouldn't be applying there, right? I love the College of Charleston um, had, had a, main, a, a supplemental question just like that. Why do you want to come to the College of Charleston? Do not mention that it's by the beach and that it's absolutely 
absolutely beautiful down here in Charleston. And they're right, it absolutely is. But they even told students, don't write about our location, write about something to do with our college or university. Uh, I got a quick question coming in here. Hello, Ms. Bonnie, thank you so much for doing these webinars. Awesome, you're welcome. Um, what is the proper time for us to get started on a college essay? Uh, all right, all right, cool. So, and how, uh, Okay, 10th grader, 10th grader. All right, cool. So um, I am going to suggest that um, a ninth or 10th grader, it is probably a little bit too early to get started on your main college essay. However, as an English teacher, I'm going to give you this advice. Start a journal. Really, really start a journal of things that um, that happen to you and um, things that you find unusual, different connections you might make with your schoolwork, uh, connections you might make with yourself in terms of what um, what turns you on, what's interesting, what's a cool thing that happened to you. As well, you can write about things like what lessons have you learned? What was a struggle for you and how did you get over it? I don't mean you have to write in a journal every day what you ate for dinner. What I'm saying is that a few times a month, maybe even once a month, get a notebook, do some writing, write about a challenge that you had this month, if it was a good, uh, a good month, a bad month, whatever it was. But in there, you can keep a little list of ideas. And so when it comes time to writing your main college essay, maybe you'll have a few ideas or a little bit of fodder for thinking about that, okay? Um, my juniors, however, if you're getting ready to finish up that junior year, uh, now is the time to get started. Absolutely, it is time, time, time to get started writing your main essay. In fact, right after this, um, the scholars that work with Access College America are going to be doing an essay lab in which we get started on the actual writing process. It is fascinating. So um, take notes on this because it's a very interesting way to get started. For those of you in the audience who are my juniors or even my sophomores or like, oh my gosh, how do I, what do I write about? How do I get started, right? Um, okay, an, an excellent college essay has four elements in it, okay? Number one, it displays the student's or scholar's core values, right? There are values in there. Um, and there are some exercises you can do. Um, if you're a scholar, we're going to work on these today. Um, exercises you can do to really uncover and, and um, you know, identify what those values are. A good discussion with your family can also be very helpful. Um, it has insight into who you are as a human being. It displays vulnerability, right? Vulnerability in that you're able to reveal something about yourself. Maybe it is a struggle. Maybe the thing that, um, that you're revealing has to do with something that you faced that you didn't really want to or a lesson that you learned. These things all display vulnerability and a college admissions officer does want to see a little bit of this in the essay. Now, how personal should you go? Well, that's gonna really depend on your comfort level. However, I would steer away from talking about problems or issues that you're not all the way over yet, or something that you would feel uncomfortable talking to a stranger about at a dinner party, okay? Everyone goes to a dinner party hoping they have interesting people to talk with and maybe some interesting stories to share. But um, you know, don't do it if it is don't don't do the topic if it's too personal and um, it would be something you're uncomfortable sharing. As well, stay away from highly politically charged topics or things that divide folks. This essay needs to be about you. You are the main character of the essay. So simply writing a, a piece about why you believe in or don't believe in this thing, um, if it's highly politically charged and the person reading your essay. Um, might have a different opinion from you, you might want to steer that in a different direction to avoid controversial topics. Um, as well, a great essay. This is the fourth thing now. We had core values, insight, vulnerability. The next thing would be craft, right? Craft is fascinating. Craft is the, um, the structure, the well-written-ness, if you will, of this essay. Um, college admissions officers want to know that you have age appropriately mastered the English language and are able to speak and write in a way that displays intelligence. 
um, as a longtime English teacher, as someone who had a writer for a father, I understand that this is an, a lifelong process, right? Learning to write is a lifelong process because hopefully we always improve. So what college admissions officers are looking for here is age appropriate language mastery, um, no spelling errors, no grammatical errors such as that, but really just a good command of how to use the language to get their point across. Um, so the, for, the, for the main essay, again, core values, insight, vulnerability, and craft. Okay, very good. Um, oh, got another, another quick question here coming in. Okay, hey, Miss Bonnie. Hope you're doing great. I am, thank you. Um, all right, so um, let's see. How long should the main AI? Okay, so you came in late. The main essay is approximately 650 words, maybe a little bit less. Um, and... Um, Let's see how, oh, okay. How long should it, should a, a student plan to work on this main essay? Okay, e. all right. So my scholars, my students here may or may not like this answer, but I'm going to suggest that you might write five or six, seven drafts of this essay. I'm thinking 10, 15 hours, you're gonna want a lot to writing this essay. Now. Uh, getting ideas on paper, brainstorming, etc. Those are included in these hours. As well, I would allow someone else to read this essay too, maybe a grammatical editor, maybe someone who can help you with um, with ideas, etc. But um, uh, understand that sometimes the essays that you've written in the past, students, are not the type of essay that you you will write for this, okay? So in English class, in history class, probably the most uh, writing intensive coursework that you've had so far, these things might be literary analysis. They might be compare and contrast. They might be um, you know, citing evidence from a text. These things are all great skills to have in writing. And trust me, when you get to college, you're going to be writing a lot of this stuff. This is not that kind of writing. It's not the stuff you write in English and history. This is about you. And sometimes that takes a little while to get um, to get um, out, right? Get out of your head, get out of your ideas and get something great on paper. So understand, I mean, really plan 10, 15 hours. Um, so anyway, awesome. Okay, so quick screen share here. Um, making the ordinary sound extraordinary. If you want to write something down, that would be a good thing. So I advise my students and scholars to make their draw conclusions, or if you have something simple you're going to write about, write about it in such a way that gives insight into who you are or what you learned, etc. For example, you might start writing about um, the cracks in the sidewalk that you've seen every day on your walk to high school every year, but then what do those things mean to you, right? That everybody or many people walk to school every day, many people pass the same restaurants or the same fast food chains, many people encounter the same people in the hallway every day. Those aren't exciting stories, but if that sparked something interesting in you or a reflection that's really important and integral to your life, then yeah, by any mean, by all means, do it, right? Um, what matters, of course, is your content and your plot. The essay test. So once you're finished writing this main essay, um, you're going to want to apply this awesome little essay test that we've come up for you, okay, with for you. So is the essay something new? Now, let me elaborate on this just a little bit. For the main essay, you want to share something that is not shared anywhere else in your college application. So what we call this is kind of like a layering effect or in like every time you turn the corner in this application, there is something new to see. So you don't want to, if there's a question, a supplemental question that has to do with why this college, you don't wanna necessarily write about that in your main essay, do you? Of course not. Um, if you have um, you know, like different things that are, are highlighted on your activities list, you may wish to choose something different in your main essay. So every piece, every portion of your essay says something new about you. Pro tip, when you're asking for letters of recommendation, with which my juniors, you're, you should be um, kind of eyeballing some teachers, asking them very kindly if they would mind doing this for you. Um, writing a letter 
pardon me, of recommendation, pro tip, give each recommender a resume which highlights different activities of yours so that each recommender can speak about a different aspect of you as a student, scholar, uh, contributor to the community, okay? So some new information is in there. So um, if you have to write a supplemental question that has to do with why this career, you might not wanna write about that in your main essay. Is this your story, right? I, I know that um, that it might be tempting to just make something up. Could be, um, maybe, maybe you'd get away with it too. But um, I think college admissions officers, nay, adults, can tell if it's a real authentic story by you, okay? And can the theme of your story be wrapped up in two to three sentences, right? How can an admissions officer argue for you, for you in committee why this scholar is an excellent candidate to get into their school? All right, so short answer questions. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so the more, the, as I told you before, there are two that generally are the most, um, you know, the most asked. And one is why this major? Um, where did your interest come from? What did you do with your curiosity, right? How come you uh, are interested in this thing? And then there's the why us, right? It's content. It's evidence of your research. It's evidence of your passion for this particular school, right? And evidence of fit to major, all right? So I have an example right now that I'm going to give of a short answer question. Last application cycle, I complete, I worked with so very many scholars and some of them were very gifted writers already. Some of them we had to work really hard to extract the best information. Um, so I don't know if, if you're aware, but University of Texas at Austin is a, um, a highly selective college and they are um, they have many supplements. So here is a, an example. I've had this, I have this student's permission to read this. So I asked him and he was very proud. This is one of my scholars from last semester. The prompt was the core purpose of the University of Texas at Austin is to transform lives for the benefit, benefit of society. Please share how you believe your experience at UT Austin will prepare you for to change the world after you graduate okay this particular young scholar has being a physician in mind okay just fyi so a student arrives at 120 inner campus drive austin texas 27812 and attends his first biology lecture he sits down listens take notes and meets some classmates studying neuroscience engineering psychology and business he exchanges phone numbers with them and plans on meeting them at chick-fil-a on guadalupe street for lunch as the year goes on he has become good friends with them they study for exam together, exams together, look for research groups to join, apply for jobs, volunteer, and stand up paddleboard on Lake Austin during the weekends. Okay, what did this scholar do right? Clearly, he knows a lot about this college and the atmosphere, right? And you, we are, as readers, looking here and looking into, okay, so this is a day in the life. Interesting. What an interesting and unique perspective. Moving on, jumping ahead, he's now entering his junior year where he's sc scoping in academically. He chooses to take computational biology because he loves computer science and its applications in biomedicine, like mapping infectious diseases and robotic surgeries. He has been a part of a lengthy study on the connection between aging and prostate cancer, where he uses statistics and mathematics to graph the relationship between the two. Biology made him a well-rounded individual because of the interconnectedness of the coursework with, fiel with his fields of interest. He he plans on connecting biology, computer science, business, and psychology in his future career, wanting to be a surgeon. He also took business classes to understand the business side of medicine, advised to him by the surgeon he shadowed back in high school. All right, why is this a good paragraph, you guys? This is why. He has looked up the classes that he is going to be taking, if accepted, in the curriculum he wants to study. Again, a great move, but also he understands how these these, um, these courses are going to help him in his future. Then the conclusion, here we go. 
For years at the University of, four years at the University of Texas as Austin has passed. He graduated with curiosity, determination, and a vast knowledge in numerous fields of study through his friend groups and plenty of academically enriching activities. Growing up to be a well-known surgeon, he travels the world on mission trips to third world countries where the pure, with the pure intention of human service. Little by little, trip by trip, he took action and worked toward his goal of changing the world. This student is me. Pretty good, huh? I love that. It, that is, the, is a very unique, very engaging short answer question. This turned out to be, I don't have a word count because I have it written on paper. This turns out to be about 250 words. I don't know about you guys in the audience, but I was really engaged when I began reading and helping him to grammatically edit this. But the idea, I did not plant. This was all him, right? I didn't help him with this idea at all. I just, he just came in and said, Miss Bonnie, would you read my supplemental question essay? And I said, uh, proudly, I will, and then gave him much praise. So this was a really, really good one. Um, all right. So again, evidence of fit to major, very, very important. Okay. Um, so let me, I'm going to switch gears here just a moment. And I'm going to go to the common application and do a really quick screen share. Um, okay, so, all right. So if you are not familiar with the common application, I have an account here um, that is like a dummy account essentially, um, because I of course have already been to college and grad school, but I need, I of course am very familiar with this. So what you can do is go on your dashboard and you can see here are some colleges that we were interested in when I last time I um, was speaking with one of my scholars and using this. So here we have Tulane University and I can search that up on my dashboard right here and I can add, add college search. I can type in a college name. There we go and it's already on my list. So that's very easy. So I can go to my dashboard or my colleges and look up Tulane University. So here's the main page for Tulane. And what I'm going to look at is down here, the writing requirements. So this is the first place you look, okay? Common app personal essay. So I'm going to click on that. And um, we have here the seven prompts that are possible for this main essay. As you can see, I always click the last one, share an essay on the topic of your choice. It can be one you've already written, one that responds to a different prompt or one of your own design. Um, as well, you can see other suggestions might be lessons we take from obstacles, reflect on a time when you questioned, a uh, you questioned or challenged a belief or idea, um, an accomplishment, event, or realization. So here's where you can find all of the common app main essay prompts, right? But then going back to writing, um, okay, so that's where you put it in. So let's go back. My colleges, we are going to go to, oops, that, I didn't mean to go there, Tulane. All right, so going back down, then here we have the Common App Personal Essay, and we can see that that's required to apply to Tulane. Then we have college questions, and there are three optional questions. So as we go down here, here's some um, other things, and then we go all the way down. Oh, this is the wrong school. Pardon me, you guys. I just got a little bit ahead of myself. So three college questions. So we're gonna go down here. So there's, there will be a few like fill in the blank uh, possibilities here. Then we're gonna go down here and you can put in your academic information, your activities, et cetera, but we're gonna to go to writing. And when we go to writing, sometimes it takes a little bit of digging, you guys, to find where these questions are. And I would not go ahead and, and if you're planning to apply to Tulane, for example, I wouldn't um, take it that these are going to be the application prompts for next year, because those will come out on or about the first week in August. So these were the questions for last application cycle. Keep that in mind. Um, please describe what describe why you're interested in attending Tulane. Optional. Um, Tulane values the 
lessons gained for pursuing an education alongside a student body that uh, represents a wide range of, range of experiences and perspective and is reflective of our multicultural world. If you would like to share a perspective related to your family, cultural group, sexual, sexual or gender identity, religious group, or some other aspect that shape your identity, please do so here. Again, it says optional. I am going to let you know that when it says optional, it is not optional. <laughs> um, yes, optional, it does not necessarily mean optional. If there is an option for you to answer a supplemental question, please always do, okay? Um, here, so the, these, um, I'm looking back here, the minimum, minimum answer is 50 words, maximum is 800 words. So you can take this, these two questions as my example. Um, um, like you could use these examples um, for any of these colleges, right? Several colleges had the short answer questions. And honestly, what I found last application cycle is um, diversity and um, like what does diversity mean to you? Um, the identity questions, these were really big in last application cycle. So I'm really looking forward to, um, to the next application cycle to see what kinds of questions are asked there. Okay. Um, all right. Another question I have coming in from the chat. Um, is it good idea to write about sports? Ah, okay, cool. Um, yes, you can write about sports, but I'm going to caution you about this too. Many, many students write about things like sports. It's fine. However, I want to know how, what, what is unique about your experience? For example, don't simply tell me uh, a regurgitation of your activities list and how you were so proud to be captain of the football team. That's awesome, but that's also very common. But if the skills that you learned playing those sports kind of gave you the confidence and ability to apply for your dream job, or if you learned communication skills and that helped you in another area of life, then yeah, that would be worthy because it's an unusual take on a usual situation. Do you see what I mean? You're going to want to take the ordinary and connect it with something that has to do with you personally to make it extraordinary. So that's a really, really good question. So you can write about things like being in sports or being in the high school play, but what did that teach you? What lesson did you learn from that? Did you struggle? And if so, how did you get over it? Those things are the important things. Don't just tell me how interesting it was to play field hockey, et cetera, okay? Um, Awesome. Hold on one second. Oh, someone wants to know where can we find the recording? Okay, yes, the recording for this will be posted on our website. So um, it'll probably take a day or two. I'm gonna have to download it, etc. But it should be be able to be found there very soon after this presentation. Excellent. Um, when what um, when Sarah asked that about um, about the um, writing about sports. I have permission to share another essay with you. This is a, a copy of a main essay that a young lady wrote. Um, and she is, was an excellent, um, excellent scholar and told a really good story. So I'm not gonna read you the whole thing. The reason this came to mind is because she wrote about sports, okay? So let, I'm only going to read the introduction and conclusion because the, she employs one of my favorite techniques in writing. So hold on one second. Okay, here she is. Polish on my boots, shining from across the ring. My custom made jacket fits my body like a glove and every little hair is tucked in the hairnet in my helmet. I look the part. My heart is pounding out of my chest. The screams from the crowd begin to fade. It's my turn to compete. Entering the ring in what feels like slow motion, I can feel my horse's blood pumping, ready to go beneath me. The buzzer sounds fast. I think quickly on my feet and take the inside turn to, to the first oxer. Flying over the first jump, I feel the wind in my face as we clear the first jump of the course. Okay, what I like about this is I'm engaged. I'm interested in this story, right? I'm like, oh, hmm, wonder what happens next, right? That's simply good storytelling. And it's something that it, it's very difficult to master. But here, I can, I, I dare say, I'm interested in this essay. I want to read more. Let me jump to the conclusion. And then I'm going to tell you a little bit about what was in the body of this essay. Um, 
I became proud of my work ethic and skills. And from writing, I have learned dedication and hard work. I also came to love myself and the person I have become. Soaring through the rest of my course, I approach the last jump. Time slows down as I am galloping up to the next oxer. Cheering, the cheering of the crowd begins to mumble. This is it. If I clear this last jump, then I win the jumper final classic. Over the last oxer, I feel him soar over it underneath me. I have won. I overcame every, every obstacle that came my way. And for the next competition, I will be ready. Oh boy, huh? Really good. The body of this essay describes how this young lady came to um, become a competitive horse rider, right? Um, and that is because she was dealing with a little bit of anxiety. She was dealing with some personal issues and she used her, her, her family out of a last resort um, enrolled her in equine therapy in middle school in order to help her with her problems. Not only did this equine therapy work, but it developed in her a love of horses. And this is why she wrote this essay to describe a struggle that she overcame in um, a very unconventional way and how it led her to become very proud of herself and, and understand her capabilities. I loved this essay. And this is what when I coach essay, I try to have students maybe start with the story and end with a story. This essay is good because it's about her. She is the main character in this essay. Sometimes students are tempted to write up an essay about somebody they admire. Those can be short answer questions sometimes, but um, I challenge you to make the essay about yourself. You, my dear, are the main character. My students out there, you're the main character of this essay, so write about you. You can mention things you've learned from others. However, you're the main character. Um, I also love when a, um, a scholar or student will begin an essay with a story and end the essay with the conclusion of that story. That's just a writing technique that I love. I feel like it keeps readers very engaged. And it also is um, just, it's, it's a great technique for excellent writing. Okay, so any other questions here in the chat? Okay, none right now. I am going to go back to um, my slideshow here. Very cool. So I have some advice, my little friends. My advice is right here for my students. Take some notes, people. Start early. Do not wait until the fall of your senior year to begin this essay. I guarantee if you're applying to highly selectives, you're probably gonna be enrolled in some difficult coursework that requires writing already. Maybe, maybe your AP histories, maybe your um, you know, AP language classes, AP sciences, whatever your thing is, you're gonna have a lot of work to do. Um, taking a rigorous senior year is very important. So get started early. Um, get your list ready, get your college planning done over the summer so that you can actually do um, a great job and a thoughtful job on this essay. Write every day, just as a human being and be as being part of an educated person who is self-reflective. Write every day, keep that journal, do, chip away at it a little bit. Sometimes it's helpful to write a draft and come back to it after a day or two so it's not fresh in your mind. See it with your own fresh eyes. Very, very good advice there too. Um, write but know your most common mistakes. If you tend to make all of your sentences the same, think about varying your sentence structure. If you tend to um, you know, create fragments and run-ons and drafts, be a, um, be a detective here when you're rewriting and when you're editing to make sure every sentence has a subject and a verb. I have seen very, very good students sometimes write fragments because they, each sentence doesn't have a subject and a verb, okay? Be wary of your comma slices, when to use a comma, when to use a semicolon, right? Independent and dependent clauses. I could go into an English lesson right here, but I won't. Um, another thing that might be helpful for many students is to go longhand. Um, what I mean by longhand is actually taking a piece of paper and a pencil and writing, like writing in a book, right? Um, although the advent of word processing and word processing software, trust me, I was here when it started, um, but composing on a computer is very convenient because you can edit yourself very quickly. Um, I find that writing on a piece of paper activates a different area of your brain. So even if you're having to recopy it on a, a you know, a, a Google Doc or in Microsoft Word, start out your drafts with notes in the margin, 
write it out longhand, get in a quiet place and just write. Okay. So be specific with short paragraphs. You're not going to be wanting to write a three paragraph essay, break it up into short paragraphs that contain a little idea each, right? Same thing from English class. Um, all right. Know your values, your brand and your campaign. What are you trying to get across now? Topics that are overused. Make note of this too, you guys. Okay. Travel, mission trips, anxiety, Boy Scouts, divorce, life lessons through sports, overcoming a life challenge that's not really a challenge, or COVID-19. Now, am I saying that any student who writes about these topics is automatically going to write a bad essay? No, not necessarily. But your take on these things needs to be extra insightful, shall we say, to make an interesting essay. Because let's face it, COVID affected everybody. And if just you simply didn't like online school or you struggled with online classes, so did about 80% of the student population. So that's really not different or unique. Uh, about 50% of parents are divorced. Again, unless there's something really unique to share about that, um, it's not new. Um, travel and mission trips, those can be good. However, if you're just simply lucky enough to be well-traveled and seen lots of things, unless you made a particular connection or learned something about yourself, that's just going to tell me that you're privileged enough to travel a lot. Um, and that really is not something that admissions officer is going to be particularly impressed with. Okay. Um, what can you do to make yourself stand out? Get a job right? Get a paid employment job over the summer, like an internship, take an online class, find a hobby. These are all things that you can do um, at a low cost, or I mean, in the case of a job, you're going to get paid, right? Um, free open online class, do things to demonstrate your skills, your intellectual curiosity in other ways besides simply pay to play programs, okay? And things that cost a lot of money. So that's just a little, little kind of piece of advice. Creating your own learning experiences and being creative about that looks much better, okay? All right, so um, where is my parent advice? Oh, here's my parent advice page. This is, this is a good one. So parents, this is gonna be really hard. And I have a high schooler, it's gonna be hard for me too. So just, I'm putting my mom head on here. I'm feeling ya, stay away. <laughs> Stay away from the essay until you're invited to read it, okay? Stay away from the process. If your student, a ninth, 10th, or 11th grader, is absolutely disengaged with the college search or college application or the college process, take a step back and encourage them to do so and come back again a little bit later when they're ready. The student needs to drive the bus with college applications, with um, researching colleges with being excited about going to college. Yeah, if the student isn't leading this, then it's the wrong time for you guys. Okay, so keep going. Gentle reminders are okay, but simply nagging is not going to get you any further. Um, um, you can. Uh, teenagers have to sound like teenagers. Trust me when I say that an adult can spot when writing is not from a teenager. Okay, how do we know this? Um, when the main essay, for example, does not mesh up with the level of writing on the main essay, does not mesh up with the curriculum and with the writing on the short answer questions, okay? I can tell. I'm an English teacher. I know if a student is cheating. I can tell when a 46-year-old person wrote an essay and when a 16 or 17-year-old person wrote an essay. Do not write your essay for him. It will come out in, in the end, not to mention um, that what it's teaching your child about, um, you know, cheating to get into a place. So no one else's fingers really should touch the keys in a on a college application, but your students. Again, no one else's fingers should touch the keys. In fact, for the students that we work with, the scholars that we work with individually, if there's any wind of cheating or if we can, if we catch them um, doing anything dishonest on their application, that contract is null and void. It's just, it, it's obvious. It's going to be obvious. So um, we can tell double spacing after a period. When I was coming up, you double spaced after a period. That grammatical rule has changed. So you can always tell when a parent wrote it, if there's a double space after that period, right? Um, so as a parent, your role is to be a parent. It's to love them. It's to encourage them. It's to gently remind and not nag. Um, have the 
have the um, student when they're when they have an essay draft to read, read it without judgment, share it with have encourage them to share it with peers or another trusted adult as well. OK, those are really, really important. So just please, please make sure that you're being a parent and, um, you know, not a whip cracker, not a counselor. Um, that's not your role. OK, awesome. All right. So how can you stay connected with Access College America? Of course, please, please check out um, our website. I'm going to go ahead and show you here where we can sign up for more webinars, more of these free free things. The recording of this will be listed here too. So here's our page. If you are interested in scheduling a free 30 minute consultation with our one of us and with for learning about the comprehensive services that we provide, um, these include labs or working sessions where we have only our scholars in attendance. These include career planning. It includes college list building. It includes research, career prep. You got it. We, you know, we are very comfortable comprehensive in our services. If you want to learn more about that, click this button here for scheduling a consultation. But if you want to attend a webinar, these are also free. Share them with your friends. I would always rather um, present to a full audience than, a, you know, than one that could have more people in it. So absolutely share with your friends. Like, come on. We have today, here we are with Saturday's award-winning essays. This week, we have applying to the University of Texas at Austin and coming up next month, career connections. So especially if you are a younger student or scholar and want to know more about how do I narrow down my choices for a major? How do I figure out what I want to do when I grow up? Please attend that. But so yeah, this is the attend webinar page. We also have archived webinars here. So yeah, please check these out. We are glad to share this information. College planning, seriously, um, it, it brings together some really important things that you care about. It's like your, your, your kid and your money. This is an expensive process. There's a lot to know about it. And I am so glad that you were able to join me today and figure out a little bit more about one of the more mysterious portions of this um, college application in which that is the essay. So I'm gonna write our website here um, in the chat. Awesome. So please check us out, please check us out and come to some of our other webinars as well. We are just about out of time for today. If you are my scholar, I will see you in a little bit for a deep, deep dive into the main essay with our main essay lab. Oh, and real quick, I wanna shout out to our current senior class, those who are have either given their decisions or are about to give their decisions on May 1st. Big shout out to you guys who have earned Five million dollars in scholarships this season. Scholarship offers are running north right now of five million dollars, and we are so very, very proud of you. All right, we will see you next time and have a great afternoon, everybody. Talk to you soon. Bye.